Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gamer Tech video with myself, Marta. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. I am here as always with the latest news from the tech world as of the last 24 or so hours. And of course today is the 26th of May. We're going to begin today's proceedings with a very interesting patent for the PlayStation 5. So you can find a link to the patent itself on the Patent Scope website linked in the description below this video if you wish to give it a read. But the long and short of it is that on Friday Sony filed a patent for a system that generates music in game depending on what's happening. So the scene, location and the emotion of the characters. It's called Dynamic Music Creation in Gaming. And part of the patent reads, quote, the present disclosure describes a mechanism for analysing music, separating out its musical components, rhythms, time signature, melodic structure, modality, harmonic structure, harmonic density, rhythmic density and timbral density, mapping those components to emotional components individually and in combination based on published reviews and show social media expressing human opinions about concerts, records, etc. Now, Sony is apparently, at least according to what we see here, planning to assign an emotional factor to what they are calling virtual faders. So the emotional components are mapped against more specific and tangible factors such as characters and locations, basically in order to generate the appropriate background music. And the a patent goes on to read, quote, Faders are given emotional components like tension, power, joy, wonder, tenderness, transcendence, peacefulness, nostalgia, sadness, sensuality, fear, etc. These musical components are mapped against motifs which have been created for individual elements or participants of the game, including, but not limited to, characters, lead, person, etc, etc, etc. Activity types like fighting, resting, planning, areas like the forest, city, desert, or whatever, personality of the person playing the game, etc. Now, obviously, when it comes to patents, it is so, so, so important to remember that just because a patent for a thing exists does not mean we will ever see this come to fruition. We have seen countless patents that have never actually resulted in a product. doesn't mean they were fake. It just means the company was filing the patent if they ever decided to do so. Now, would this be outside the realms of possibility for Sony to be looking into? Well, obviously not. Will we actually see it coming to the PS5? It's really tough to say, to be honest. I mean, it certainly sounds interesting, but I don't think you can really beat a piece of music that has been constructed by someone who has been given the brief of, like, this is the scene, or this is the boss fight, or whatever. Like, just take Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3, for example. Those two games have... Amazing soundtracks, two of my favourite game soundtracks, and it's a lot of it comes down to how good the boss themes are. Like, imagine if like that was made by an AI, that would just not be the same, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see if this ever is included. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see this on the PS5 specifically or if we're going to see it ever, but I thought it was interesting. Anyway, we're going to move over now to our next topic, and we have a few AMD things to get through today. The first of which is regarding a few upcoming devices, including Cezanne and Van Gogh. Uh, excuse me, sorry, Van Gogh. My throat kind of closed in on itself there. Anyway, let's begin. So basically what we have is something was posted onto the EXP review website. It has now been taken down, but not before it was retweeted by HXL on Twitter, of course, and they used the DeepL translator to translate it from Chinese to English. So obviously do keep in mind translation errors, yada, 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 but I will say this, I have used this translator personally. I don't work for them for anything, obviously, but I do generally find it to be more accurate than Google Translate. Anyway, that is completely off topic. Let's read what it has to say. Quote, one of the more useful things for us in this table, and you can see the table on screen, just that quote for a second, is the layout next year on MSDT and APU. You can see that AMD is laying out an APU called Cezanne next year, and then the new APU codename Rembrandt. But the table doesn't mark exactly what kind of architecture they'll be using, but we've got the latest from an anonymous source. Instead of the rumoured RDNA 2, 
Cezanne will use Zen 3 plus a Vega 7 combination. It will continue to use the TSMC N7 process, and like Renoir, it will come in both low and standard bolted versions. Rembrandt is a huge update. The CPU architecture will use Zen 3 plus, and the GPU is finally getting rid of Vega architecture and replacing it with RDNA 2. In terms of the process, it will be updated to TSMC's 6NM, which is optimized the optimized sorry version of the N7 process and will support DDR5, LP DDR5, and in addition, USB 4 and PCIe 4.0. Two new buses will also be available on this generation architecture. AMD is planning a processor at ultra low vo voltage called Van Gogh, which is a streamlined version of the PS5 Xbox Series X custom processor, also using the Zen 2 Plus RDNA 2 architecture, but with a TDP limited to 9 watts at aimed thin and light mobile devices. So let's kind of summarize that. That was a lot of information I just threw at you, so let's summarize that a little bit. So for, for Rembrandt, it will be LP DDR5 or low power DDR5 for the APUs, which obviously are going to be for notebooks and laptops. Or DDR5 is going to be for the next generation replacement for AM4, which obviously is going to be AM5. Now, the important thing that to take away from this is that it confirms that Rembrandt does use DDR5, and this does match what we have heard from our sources about the next generation platform for AMD that it would be utilizing uh, DDR5 for AM5. For Cezanne, it was rumored previously to be using RDNA2, but at least according to these rumors, it does look like it's still using Vega. But obviously, this is a rumor, you know the drill, take it with a pinch of salt, etc, etc, etc. Until it comes out of the mouth of AMD, you can't really count anything as 100% confirmed. So essentially, the only thing that runs counter to what we've heard before with this one is, of course, Cezanne allegedly using Vega instead of RDNA 2. You might wonder why they would make that decision, and I would wonder the same thing myself, to be fair. But until AMD issue a statement on it, I'm not really willing to speculate. Could It could literally be a multitude of reasons and, of course, the possibility that this information is just simply incorrect. However, that's not the only AMD thing I have for you today. I also have some benchmarks for the Ryzen 9 3900 XT and Ryzen 5 3600 XT. So, what we have this time around is a set of supposed Cinebench R20 benchmark scores, which were posted over at the Chip Hell forums. So, what do we actually see? Well, you can plainly see that the Ryzen 9 3900 XT is coming ahead of the stack, just barely edging out the 10900K and 10900KF uh, by three points. XT coming in at 542 and the K and KF coming at 539. And then we see the 3800 and 3600 XT actually getting the same score of 531, as well as the Ryzen 9 3950X coming in at the same amount. Uh, the 10900 and 10900 100F, sorry, are coming in at 529 each, obviously, and the 10700KF and 10700K both coming in at 524, and the Ryzen 3900X coming in at the bottom of 521. Now, obviously, these scores are all single core tests. But it still managed to edge out the 10900 processors if indeed this information is accurate. Now that's pretty huge, I'm sure you guys will agree, especially when you take into consideration the clock speed of these parts. For example, the leak is showing the Ryzen 9 3900 XT to boost to 4.8 GHz versus the 4.6 for the, the vanilla whereas the 10900K can hit 5.3, so there's a 500 megahertz difference between the two. So essentially what we can take away from this and the Ryzen 3600 XT entry is that if this information is actually representative of the final sort of speeds and results that we can expect, AMD's upcoming part is going to outperform Intel's latest efforts in single-threaded workloads while also running at slower clock speeds. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to just wait and see how this actually pans out. Is it actually true? And, of course, even if these benchmarks are true, even if this is real, it is still a single benchmark. We can't be going around saying, oh, just throw Comet Lake in the bin because of this one result, even if it was true. That would be silly. 
So just keep that in mind, guys. It's very, very interesting and we be very, very cool if it's true. We'll definitely continue to keep Intel on their toes and heat up the competition between the two companies even further, which could bring us some interesting results. You know, AMD definitely woke Intel up from a long sleep where they didn't really feel the need to try because, well, AMD did not really give them the reason to be competitive because they were just winning without really trying and obviously Ryzen changed all that and Intel have really brought their A game recently which is good. Oh and just a quick aside for those of you who were waiting Paul's lengthy Unreal Engine 5 analysis video that I've been promising for some time now he did put it out yesterday you may have seen it but in case you missed it I will link it in the description below this video for you if you want to go check it out, it's definitely worth watching. And also, Paul was recently featured on the BRAP podcast where he discussed numerous things with the guys over there. I will also link that in the description below this video in case you guys missed it. It's definitely worth a listen. Probably while you're doing something else because it is like two and a half hours long. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is hugely appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.